I love watching bubbles form in champagne and soda. You may have heard that these bubbles are formed at things called nucleation sites in the beverage. But what really are nucleation sites? And how are bubbles made there? The answer might surprise you. To understand how bubbles form in soda, we first have to remember carbonated beverages are super saturated with carbon dioxide. This just means the soda has more carbon dioxide than it can hold at equilibrium. So carbon dioxide constantly escapes from sodas. When most of the carbon dioxide escapes, the soda gets flat. Interestingly, most of the carbon dioxide escapes invisibly from the surface of the soda. You can see this by putting a lit candle over a glass of soda. The escaping carbon dioxide puts the candle out. But obviously, some of the carbon dioxide escapes as bubbles. And these bubbles are created at nucleation sites. Like this. A Mentos candy has thousands of nucleation sites. These are pits and pockets on the surface of the candy that act like escape portals where carbon dioxide can exit the soda as a gas. So naturally, soda plus Mentos is a fun foamy fountain. Check out the nucleation sites etched into this glass. They make a spiral pattern on the bottom. So when champagne is poured into the glass, a bunch of bubbly foam is produced. And when the foam dies down, we can see there's lots of bubbles being produced at the nucleation sites. But if we compare to champagne in a regular glass with no nucleation sites, there are far fewer bubbles. And yet, there are some bubbles in the regular glass. But in normal glasses, these nucleation sites are usually found in cloth fibers or imperfections along the glass surface. But of course, there's not as many of these, which is why there's far fewer bubbles. But here's a very curious fact. Bubbles don't form at nucleation sites. You see, it takes an enormous amount of energy for dissolved carbon dioxide molecules to make a bubble from scratch. That's because they have to push water molecules apart to do so. And that's like trying to tear open a portal in a fluid. So what's really going on at a nucleation site? And why are bubbles found here? The secret is nucleation sites already contain bubbles. The research of Liget Belair has shown that pits and crevices in beverages trap air bubbles. Like the picture he captured here of an air bubble in a cotton fiber. It works like this. You can see that this Lego minifigure has a crevice in the top of its head. Now watch what happens when I drop it into the water. Do you see that little air bubble that's trapped inside the crevice? That's what nucleation sites do. They trap little air bubbles. No energy is needed to create the bubble. It's already there. So that's the secret. It's not the nucleation sites themselves that are the escape portals. It's the bubbles trapped in the nucleation sites that are the escape portals. Dissolved carbon dioxide simply diffuses into this pre-existing bubble, causing it to grow. When the bubble gets large and buoyant enough, it detaches and rises leaving behind another air pocket where the process begins again. Check it out. You can even watch this process happening in real time from a single nucleation site here. Pretty cool, huh? Now you can understand why opening a soda that's been shaken makes a mess. Shaking introduces tons of air bubbles into the liquid. That's tons of escape portals. So unless you wait for the bubbles to dissipate after shaking, the CO2 comes out quickly, usually making a mess. So now you know. The true nucleation sites aren't those pits, pockets, and crevices in Mentos candies, fibers, and other things. Instead, bubbles grow and release from air pockets that are already trapped in these crevices.